Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany, welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. It is time to do the next round of the My Bad TBR game for the month of February. All right, so before we jump into the next round of gameplay, I do want to quickly recap how I did in terms of January's round. I also do need to pull some challenge prompts from my little mug over here. Also, if you can hear like this high-pitched buzzing in the background, one of my neighbors is using their power saw. Can't really do anything about that, so I really apologize if that's annoying. Hopefully it is not translating into this video. So in January, I ended up having to draw eight times because I drew two number twos, and every time I draw a two, I have to draw again. But even though I did draw eight cards, I only ended up with four books because every single time I drew a two I was able to move one of my pawns out onto the free space right in front of their start which is no book selection and then immediately after that I drew a queen which gets one of my pawns into home base again no book selection so I ended up only needing to actually read four books for the TBR game I did have other books already on my TBR but we're not going to really talk about those today because this is purely how I did within the context of the TBR game one of the prompts that I landed on was random color generator and that means I had to use a random color generator and then pick a book based on the color selected so so I was given the color of vermilion, which is like a reddish orange color. And for that, I chose Killers of a Certain Age by Deanna Rayborn. I did end up reading this, didn't love it. I gave it a three stars. You can hear all my thoughts about it in the recent reads video that I posted. I will try to be sure to leave that linked down below for you if you were interested, but I did end up satisfying that prompt. Another prompt was to read a highly anticipated book. And for that, I chose The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. So that was also satisfied. Again, you can hear more of my thoughts about that in that recent reads video. The third prompt was for a mood read. And because it was a mood read I didn't actually select anything to read in my last TBR video I ended up selecting Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton because this came in my January book of the month box and since I'm trying to read those as they come in I went ahead and selected this this is another one that I didn't really enjoy as much as I thought I would I gave this a three stars and I will have more of my thoughts coming out on this in my next recent reads video and then the final draw landed me on the prompt to read a Goodreads pick however because I drew a number eight to land on that prompt an eight allows me to actually swap a prompt but not to the prompt of my choice so I had to randomly select another prompt and that once again gave me color generator so this time I used a color generator again and this landed me on the color of salmon for that I chose surviving savannah by patty callahan because I believe this is like a beautiful salmony pinkish orange right here I am actually currently in the middle of the story I have less than two hours of listening time on the audiobook so I intend to finish this today so because I will be finishing it no punishments will be needed for the month of February so overall I had a very successful TBR month in January not only did I complete all of the prompts for my TBR game but I basically read Read all of the other books that were on my TBR as well so it was a solid month. I did also end up reading two additional books in January that were not originally on my TBR but they do satisfy some of the challenges that I've set for myself so because of that I'm only going to be selecting two for my little challenge mug here. If you don't know for 2023 I've set a lot of goals for myself in terms of authors I want to try, priority reads, I also have all the books that I plan to read for the buzzword challenge and a couple of other challenges and I ended up adding some additional prompts in here for uh, other challenges that I'm doing because there are some prompts within those challenges that I'm not naturally going to satisfy over the course of my reading in 2023, like poetry. One of them is to read a poetry or a book written in verse, and I don't like poetry, I don't read poetry, and so that's not something I'm naturally going to satisfy, and any prompts like that I did go ahead and add in here. So this is quite full now. I'm a little bit nervous about it. Some of the books that I already have for my February TBR as well will satisfy some of these prompts, so I'm only going to select two. I'm going to be kind to myself. I hope my draws are kind to me. I really hope that there's no chunky fantasy in here, but let me go ahead and grab this first one here. I can't grab it. Okay, all right, let's see what we got. Ooh, Mary Kubica. Okay, so she's one of the authors that I really want to try in 2023. So that works out perfectly. I'm just going to go ahead and look through some of her backlist titles to see if there's anything that I want to read for February. So I don't have a book selected right now for this, but I definitely will. All right, that worked out really well. So let me go ahead and see what this one comes up with. Ooh, A Vow So Bold and Deadly. No! <laughs> Y'all, I am not emotionally ready to read that book. Oh my gosh. I, I know that I just need to, but I'm not. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't know what direction it's going to take, and I'm just like shooketh by the thought of it. So, okay. All right. Well, this is a sign that I definitely need to go ahead and get that out of the way because I don't think that there's ever going to be a good time for me to read it. I just need to, to read it and get it over with. So I might make this one a priority because I just need to get it done. So, all right. So those are the two formal challenges that I pulled. Let's go ahead and now jump into the gameplay. All right, everybody. It's time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. I have the board here. Should be exactly as I left it after the January round. Typically six draws is the default number that I do every single round. However, I do have quite a lot of books already on my February TBR because I have some things that I'm trying to accomplish, including a themed reading blog. And so my February TBR at this point is getting a little bit ambitious. So I think I'm going to 
start with four draws only. We're going to see how well some of the prompts I get fit in with the books already on my TBR. And depending on whether or not we are in good shape, I will then choose whether or not I go ahead and proceed with six. So let's go ahead and start with draw number one and see how kind this board is to me. Okay, so we got an ace. So this is simply either a move forward one or move upon from start. So let's see which color I will be moving. All right, green. So I can't actually move a guy from start because this guy is already on start. So if I move him forward one, I will have to read a debut. And if I move forward this guy one, I will have to read a book box selection. And I think I'm going to go ahead and go to a debut because I do believe one of the items I have on my February TBR is a debut. And plus it frees up this free space. So next time I can get a little green man out onto the playing field. All right. So draw number one was an ace and then the color green. I couldn't move one of my green pawns out from start. So I just moved my one guy forward and it landed on debut and for that I'm going to read Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I'm going to be reading this as well as several other books for a themed reading vlog in February so it was perfect that this happened to fit in with that prompt. I know that this has been going around absolutely everywhere. I've heard nothing but great things about this one. I believe that this is a second chance romance but I'm not entirely sure. It says they say you can never go home again and for Persephone Fraser ever since she made the biggest mistake of her life a decade ago that has felt too true instead of spending glittering summers on the lakeshore of her childhood she stays home in a stylish apartment in the city keeping everyone a safe distance from her heart until she receives the call that sends her racing back to Barry's Bay and into the orbit of Sam Florick the man she thought she'd have to live without. For six summers through hazy afternoons on the water and warm summer nights working in his family's restaurant Percy and Sam had been inseparable. Eventually that friendship turned into something more before it fell spectacularly apart. When Percy returns to the lake for Sam's mother's funeral their connection is as undeniable as it always has been but until Percy can confront the decision she made they'll never know whether their love is bigger than the biggest mistakes of their past. Told over the course of six years and one weekend every summer after is a gorgeous nostalgic look at love and the people and the choices that mark us forever. This sounds absolutely fabulous. It sounds like it's going to be a more harder hitting romance and that is absolutely what I'm looking for in my romances. I'm looking for substance. I'm not looking for just smut. I'm not looking for insta love. I'm not even actually looking for cute rom comy type stories. I want a little bit more oomph to my romance and it sounds like that's what this is going to be. So this is absolutely going to be on my February TBR. All right so far so good. Let's see what's next. Okay, we have a 10. So that's either a move forward 10 or backwards one situation. Let's see what color I'm moving. All right, red, let me flip the board and we'll see what we got. All right, so I have quite a few options here. If I move this guy backwards one, it's red on the cover. If I move this guy backwards one, it is book box. If I move him forward 10, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is historical fiction. And if we move this guy forward 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, most recent purchase. Hmm, let me have a think on this one. Okay, so since I do know that I'm going to be getting a couple of book boxes in February, I feel like doing book box or most recent purchase purchase is going to be the most acceptable because I am trying to read those as they come into me and assuming that they are available at my library or that I can get them on scribed or audible I think it would be fairly easy for me to fit in one of those and those when they come in would definitely be one of my most recent purchases so I think I'm going to go ahead and move backwards here one to book box pick next I drew a 10 and the color red I decided to move one of my red pawns backward one and then go for the book box selection because I do know that I'm going to be receiving a book of the month book and I believe I'm also going to be trying a new subscription service in February there's going to be more on that later because I plan to do a whole video on it. So I'm definitely going to be getting one to two book boxes in February and I'm going to be selecting one of those books to read in February, assuming I'm able to get it from my library or that it's available on Scribd or Audible. And so because of that, I felt like this was the more prudent option to take. However, because those options have not yet been released on the website, I don't actually know what I'm going to be selecting and getting for February. So it can actually give you the book that I will be reading to satisfy this prompt. However, I will be reading one of those book box selections in February. All right. That was draw number two, on to draw number three. All right, we got our lovely queen Feyre and because I picked a queen, I now get to move one of my pawns automatically into home base. Let's go ahead and see which color is safe. All right, green. So one of my lucky little green guys on the playing field gets to go into home base. Doesn't really matter to me which one goes. So I'm just gonna take this guy and put him safely into home base. And of course, no book needs to be chosen for that one. Next, I drew a queen and green. And y'all know that a queen gets automatically one of my pawns into home base. So I moved one of my green babies into home base. So it is safe for the remainder of the game. No book needs to be selected for this. On to draw number four. 
okay, we have a king. And so a king is actually a get out of jail free card, which means if I fail to complete all of my books in a month, I don't have to take any type of punishment the following month. So I'm going to hang on to this king and he's going to hang out with the joker that I pulled in November, which I still haven't used yet either. So these guys are both just going to sit and wait until I need them. Immediately after the queen, I drew a king, which means if I don't successfully complete one of the TBRs for a month, I don't have to take a punishment going into the following month. So I'm just going to keep that guy on hand for when I spend spectacularly fail at one of my reading months and he's going to bail me out basically. All right so that was draw number four but I only have two prompts that I need to satisfy so far so we will go ahead and do at least one more to see what we get. All right moving backwards for yellow I actually only have one yellow guy out on the board so let me turn the board and see what we get. Okay, moving this guy backwards for one, two, three, four, spring. So I have to read a book that gives me spring vibes and that is definitely going to be very, very easy with the TBR that I have selected for February already. So that fits in very, very nicely. So I think I am gonna go ahead and do one more for a total of six and we'll just keep it standard again. All right, then I drew a number four and yellow. Four is a backwards movement. So I had to move my yellow pawn backwards for it landed on spring, meaning I have to read a book that gives me spring vibes. And for this, I'm choosing The Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. This is another one that I'm reading for my themed reading vlog and it sounds absolutely fantastic. This is actually one that I was kind of avoiding. I've been seeing it going around everywhere but the cover which is very spring-like and very light really felt YA to me and that's what I thought that this was but after reading the synopsis recently I realized that it's not. It's actually more of an adult romance and again it definitely sounds like it may have some more of those harder hitting elements which I'm 100% here for. So this one says Naomi wasn't just running away from her wedding. She was writing to the rescue of her estranged twin to knock him out Virginia. A rough around the edges town where disputes are settled the old-fashioned way with fists and beer usually in that order too bad for Naomi her evil twin hasn't changed at all after helping herself to Naomi's car and cash Tina leaves her with something unexpected the niece Naomi didn't know she had now she's stuck in a town with no car no job no plan no home with an 11 year old going on 30 to take care of bearded bad boy Barber Knox prefers to live his life the way he takes his coffee alone unless you count his basset hound Waylon Knox doesn't tolerate drama even when it comes in the form of a stranded runaway bride there's a reason Knox doesn't do complications or high maintenance women especially not the romantic one. But since Naomi's life imploded right in front of him, the least he can do is help her out of her jam. And just as soon as she stops getting into new trouble, he can leave her alone and get back to his peaceful, solitary life. At least that's the plan. So it sounds like we have a female main character that is in a bit of trouble in her personal life. She's run away from her wedding. She's stuck with a niece she didn't know she had. Her sister has taken off with basically her car, her cash. So she is stranded in this town, knowing no one, no job, no home, nothing going on. And then you have the bad boy vibes going on over here with Knox. And it sounds like he's going to come to her rescue and they're going to develop something more. I'm here for it. I love a good bad boy with a heart of gold in my books. It's one of my favorite romance tropes, which I'll probably talk about a little bit more in an upcoming video. And the cover absolutely gives me spring vibes. I don't know if this is set in spring or anything like that, but this is definitely going to satisfy that prompt. All right, and number five, let's see what color. All right, blue. I actually only have one blue guy out on the playing field. So one, two, three, four, five emoji. So that is random emoji generator. And so that means I have to use a random emoji generator and whatever emoji I generate, I have to go ahead and select a book based on that emoji. All right, so the final draw was a number five and the color blue and I landed on emoji, meaning I have to use a random emoji generator to select my next read. And after I got done with that prompt and I actually used the emoji generator, I got an emoji that I didn't understand. Like I didn't know what it was. And so I was like, okay, I'll try again. And the same thing kept happening. And I realized that unless it's like a really standard emoji, that's pretty obvious. I'm having a hard time with this prompt. And so for this, I think I'm going to go ahead and use the Jack that I've been saving since November. In the very first round of this game, after I brought it back, I got a Jack, which allows me to skip any prompt so I don't have to do it. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and use it here. And I think I might consider removing that prompt altogether from my board. It's a little bit more ambiguous than I wanted it to be. You know, if I get a heart as an emoji, great. I can automatically interpret that as love. If I get a dog as an emoji, I can select a book that features a dog or a book that heavily surrounds animal care or something like that. But there are like really random obscure emojis that I'm getting that I have no idea even what they are or if I could even find a book that would fit. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and use my skip for this prompt. I'm not going to do it. And then I'm also going to consider possibly changing that prompt on my board. So for this one, I am not going to go ahead and go forward with it. So those are all of the books that will satisfy the prompts for my TBR game. I do have a handful of other books on my February TBR 
are because like I said, I'm doing a themed reading vlog. And so I have to read the books for this vlog. So I'm going to quickly run through what the books are. I'm not really going to talk much about them just because I do want to save that more for the vlog, but I can tell you that they all have romance in common. So the first one that I'm going to read is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is probably the Christina Lauren that I hear the most praise about. It's got a 4.34 on Goodreads with over 289,000 reviewers. So I think that's pretty strong. Christina Lauren is typically very hit or miss for me, but I'm absolutely willing to give them a chance with this one. This will also have the benefit of satisfying two other challenges, the Buzzword Readathon and then another challenge that I'm doing in a book club group that I have where I'm reading some of their backlist titles of previous book club picks. Love that for me. I will also be reading Cake by Jay Bengston. This is a romance that I had actually never heard of before, before it was brought to my attention. From what I, from what I understand, this is a standalone romance, but it is like the first in a series of companion novels that she might have. I have to look into that further. But from what I'm understanding, this is following a rock star who has kind of a trauma in his past that he's had to deal with his whole entire life. And then he's going to a friend's wedding where he is paired up with this more light, bubbly college student. And it goes from there. So it sounds like this might be a Grump and Sunshine romance, if not a Grump and Sunshine, at least a person who is dealing with a lot of trauma from his past. And he meets a girl that kind of helps him work through all that, which I'm definitely here for. Bad boys are brooding boys. Those are my thing in romance. So this sounds absolutely phenomenal. And I'm excited to get to it and see if I like it and maybe want to continue in the series. I have also heard really amazing things about the Bergman Brothers series by Chloe Lise. So I will also be reading the first book in that called Only When It's Us. And I believe this is a hate to love or at least like a frenemies to lovers kind of relationship. And again, I'm down for it because I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. All right, y'all. So these are the only two books that I actually own out of all the books that I will be reading for February. So I have these two plus the other, I believe, four or five romances that I will be reading plus the Mary Kubica I still have to choose as well as the book box selection that I haven't actually made yet. So I definitely feel like I have a more ambitious TBR for February and I'm really, really nervous about this one. I don't think I actually mentioned what this was about, but this is the third and final book in Bridget Kimmerer's Curse Breakers trilogy. The first book is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and it kind of goes from there. I'm really nervous about what's going to happen to my baby Grey because I loved him so much and his storyline is just not going in the direction that I thought it was going to go. So I need to just buckle down and get this one out of the way, get it done and finish another series. So I think that's what I'm going to do after I finish the book that I'm currently reading. But that is all that I have for this TBR video. There were a lot of moving parts in this one because I already had a pretty set TBR for February and I was trying to fit that into my TBR game and then I had to draw the challenge prompts and it was just a whole mess of chaos. But that's what you get when you come to my channel, chaos. Please let me know if you have read any of the books that I have on my TBR for February and what you thought I would love to know. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and I actually have a video to film and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys.